Hey folks, welcome to another one of our Becoming events, and that's where we come together to learn about all of the different careers in energy efficiency. Here at Efficiency Canada, we are super grateful to the two sponsors that make this series possible. That's Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. Both sponsors are really key in growing the Canadian energy efficiency workforce, and we wouldn't be able to do the work that we do without them. The Becoming series specifically is where we meet leaders in the sector and hear their story of how they got started, what skills are really important for their role, and any advice that they have for people who are looking to follow in their footsteps. This month's speaker is Kathy Zhang, who is a certified energy manager and also the director of outreach at Step Up, which is a volunteer-run nonprofit organization that focuses on advancing gender equity, diversity, and inclusion in the energy management industry. Before we dive into things, there's a few things that I do want to take note of, just some housekeeping. First, if there's anything that you in the audience need to do to settle into the call, whether you want to grab a snack, get some water, do a quick shake or a stretch or change locations in your house, I encourage you to do that now as we'll be on the call together for about the next 45 minutes. We also want to start this event with a land acknowledgement. Land acknowledgements should not just be done out of habit, but something that we do with a clear intention. We want to position ourselves and provide meaningful and thankful acknowledgement to the Inuit, First Nations, and Métis communities whose land we occupy. I want to acknowledge that I currently live, gather, work, and organize on the traditional unceded territories of the Algonquin Nation. I also acknowledge how I, as a settler, still benefit from the systems of injustice that Canada upholds. Please feel encouraged if it feels comfortable for you to share your own thoughts and land acknowledgement in the chat. We are going to be recording tonight's event, so you will be able to go back and review anything that you miss. We have a hard cutoff time at 5.45 Eastern, and the last half of the event will be entirely for Q&A. So if there's anything on your mind that you want to learn more about within energy management, now is the, the place to do it. You will be able to put your questions in the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen throughout the presentation. If you go into that box, you can vote questions up and down, or depending on um, which ones you want to see answered the most. If you put questions into the chat, I might miss them, so I do encourage you to use the Q&A tool. And one other option is you can raise your virtual hand and I can unmute you if you want to have a little bit more of a conversation or uh, ask a question out loud like that. So that will all be at the end. And for now, I want to introduce this week's speaker. So as I mentioned, this week's speaker is Kathy Zhang. Kathy has over 14 years of diverse project management experience with the last decade focusing in the field of renewable energy, energy conservation and energy efficiency. She has founded her own consulting business alongside her really exciting volunteer work. And so, Kathy, I know you have quite a bit to teach us, so I'm hoping you can take it away. Thank you, Kirsten. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Efficiency Canada, for inviting me to be a guest speaker. I am Kathy Zen, and I'm currently running CD Consulting, basically my own consultation group. And get done right away. So, so today I'm going to share in with you my career path of becoming an energy manager. Feel free to submit questions and then, you know, I, I would really hope today's session be, be an interactive session, you know, there's questions, let's see uh, where you are at and then let's see if I can be helpful in terms of helping you to get closer to become an energy manager. Okay. So I created this slide to show you an overview of what my energy milestone uh, in terms of the past experience look like in the past decade. Now, by education, I'm actually a bachelor of chemical engineering, uh, chemical engineering with University of Toronto. But when I graduated, I wasn't really all hung up become a chemical engineer. I was really trying to join the workforce as soon as I can. Any kind of engineering position, I'm willing to go for it. So I graduated in 2007 and then between 2007 to 2010, I was actually in the New York state and then picked up a job as an environmental engineer. That position exposed me to tons of uh, technical skill training data analysis with a focus on uh, stormwater runoff and decades of rainfall data analysis, as well as laboratory pilot on uh, growing like microalgae for biofuel extraction. And there's also like air permit 
environmental project. Through that position, it firmed up or solidified my technical skills in terms of data analysis, calculations, reporting, etc. So my energy journey actually started in 2010 when I came back from the States. I joined a small engineering firm, Aspernet and Associates. When I joined, they were four years into their sort of like entrepreneurial uh, experience. So I got thrown into all kinds of projects. It's not just I can give you a couple of examples. There's like eco passage construction for Norfolk counties. And then there's also wastewater treatment, water treatment, emergency water supply project. And there's also like environmental municipal environmental assessment. So basically because it's a new engineering firm, there's no blueprint. So there's no template, basically go figure it out. That's attitude. So through that experience, I was exposed to multi-discipline project management experience. And then from that batch of all kinds of project, I get trusted to run a five megawatt solar facility. And then in order to run that successfully, I had to do a lot of research on my own and then also figure out the regulatory permit. So for that, basically drafted 16 to 18 report. And I'll dive into that experience a little bit later in the next slide. Other than running the five megawatt renewable energy project, I also did the ISO funding application for Aboriginal uh, Community Energy Plan. So this is my, also my introduction to ISO programs as well as fundings available from Ontario. After that, 2013, I got an opportunity to be invited to join Clear Result. Back then it was still called Willis Energy. So three years, again, I worked on solidifying my technical skills as a PSU program technical reviewer. So what PSU means is it is focused on commercial and industrial level equipment plus system upgrade with an energy approach. So the objective is looking for energy opportunity and energy conservation through equipment slash system upgrade. So three years of that, and then after that, three years as a conservation account manager for Hydro One. So Clear Result has a couple of staffs, I think seven to eight of us outsourced to run Hydro One CDM plan a couple of years back when there is a requirement to do that. So because of that, we call ourselves CAMS. Through that experience, I get to talk to many business owners and many management reps listening to their concerns and then clarify what energy conservation is about and how exactly we're delivering it with incentives and fundings provided by ESO. So I did three years of that. So this is how I kind of showed up my business attitude or business interest. So in 2018, I got an opportunity to join Rotman Executive MBA. It's a one year program. I wasn't willing to spend like say three years plus to finish a full MBA credit. So the one year Executive MBA suits me quite well as well as my schedule. So finished that in 2019 and then co-founded a step up which is an organization, I'll delve into the details later on. And then also started my own CZ consulting because the way that my career path has been, like I sharpen up my technical skills and then I sharpen up my business attitude through the site visit, through many conversations with the business owners. So I want to kind of combine those experiences together. And there's no better ways of trying my own consultation, you know, see how I'm going to combine my technical skill with people's skills and see if I can be successful. <laughs> 
So after that, from 2020 till now, basically my energy goes into getting more project with CZ Consulting. So currently started actually last year, I have some major opportunities coming my way. One of them is signing an agreement with Sobeys to be their energy manager. And then the second one is really started with a contracted service agreement with Blackstone Energy Service as the energy solutions group operations manager. I'm going to dive into that experience, uh, those experience later uh, at a later slide uh, as well. So step up energy board, we started in 2019. And that is with a mission kind of like a completely different from the technical skills that I had. Step up is really to help the energy industry, energy field, and the energy offices, companies to better attract, retain, and advance mid-career women. So here is an overview of the defining moment in my career. I went through and separated them into four major pillars. Let's start from the left. Introduction to Renewable Energy. This is with 2010 Aspernet and Association. So through that, you know, I get a very good overview and deep understanding what the FIT program is about. You know, um, selling electricity, generating electricity back to the grid and signing the agreement, help the customers secure project financing from the technical perspective and also you know stakeholder engagement because if you're going to do fit for that size five megawatt you have to do a lot of community and public engagement including newspaper advertisements and there's also tons of regulatory permitting i did like created 16 to 18 report and various permits for in order to bring that project, push that project forward and have it success, successfully executed. The second pillar um, defining moment is really 2010, when energy conservation is gaining traction and the one offered opportunity to join clear result. This is when like a, the, the mindset change comes a couple of years later, like three to four years later, when I become a camp representing Hydro One in the Northern Ontario region. After visiting many facilities and having conversations with the business owner, I realized that, you know, you really have to conserve energy first. And then second step is to consider renewable energy, because if you start with renewable energy, you are not filtering out the energy waste in the system. So if you conserve first, knowing what the existing infrastructure operation and the system is like and how much energy that is required to maintain that, you'll be able to define where the energy waste is, filter them out, and then switch to renewable energy. That would really help you to solidify a system from the energy perspective. So that, that's a second major pillar. Mindset change happened around, let's say 2016, 2017. The third pillar is really electrification. This started a couple of years ago when Tesla opened up their first outlet store in a Yorkdale mall. I went there and I, I, I test drived the electrical vehicle. I loved it. I think this is a future. But as a customer and a consumer, I wasn't willing to purchase an electrical car right away because, you know, I'm worried about the battery technology. And I'm also worried about the, the risk factor, you know, whether the electrical car, the technology is going to hold and is comparable to the uh, regular passenger car. And of course, third one, the most important one is the price, you know. So I think I'm going to go for electrical car soon, maybe in two to three years, <laughs> but let's see. The third pillar is project implementation. So after all that technical, you know, um, skills uh, training in terms of data analysis, you know, energy bills, energy uh, training and uh, 
interaction with the peers in the energy field, as well as from the perspectives from the customer, from the facility owner side, from the subcontractor side. Last year, when I was offered the opportunity to uh, work with Blackstone Energy Service, it comes, I feel, I felt like the timing is right because, you know, the provincial ISO program, funding program, including retrofit, PSU, you know, EPP, energy managers, those are more at the top level from, from, the, from the study level. The reason why I'm saying that is because the time that I spent with Clear Result Office from 2010 all the way up to 2013 and then 2019, this is a process when ISO program gets set up, you know, the energy studies, energy project, and all that report and data gets flooded back to ISO because Clear Result is the main program delivering contractor for ISO back then. So I get exposure to all kinds of studies and mainly studies. So I've done so much and reviewed so much study and knows what the system looks like on paper, on blueprint. You know, I felt like, okay, so now it's time to manage some installation and construction project. So starting last year, it's been my focus in terms of how the energy project equipment system gets built in the field. So let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so here are some typical pictures that I wanna share with you. They are actually not the actual pictures from my project because of the confidentiality agreements that I signed. So basically let's go from the, starting from the right. This is a typical picture of refrigeration cases or banks of cases in a grocery store. You know, Sobe stores would have tons of this similar similar to Loblaw and other grocery stores. But in a, in a grocery store, refrigeration system is where the uh, biggest energy saving opportunity comes from. This is through compressors, you know, through the control and through the case lighting, all of that combined in term, as well as the system uh, integration for the refrigeration system. There's other opportunities such as HVAC, the fan motor, the VFD installation, as well as the, uh, the airflow monitoring and control, et cetera. And then of course there's lighting. There's also like night curtains. There's also like a deep case cleaning. The list goes on, but the key thing right now with grocery stores is really refrigeration system lighting and then HVAC system. So the rooftop solar project is one that I'm currently managing. We're really close to the final stage. I'm actually there uh, on site today. We were just finishing the mechanical installations on the roof and then like a step away from commissioning the facility and then finish the installation of the meter from Milton Hydro. And then I'm also taking part in the electrical vehicle uh, charger installation. Last year, summer, we installed like, uh, I think it's 18 of those level two EV charger outlet, and then four of those level three uh, chargers. So, and then there's other project, the vehicle to grid is more like an R&D project, research and development project right now in Ontario, maybe even in North America, utilities, you know, the uh, engineering consultant. We were just running pilots with fundings. Our funding is from the federal level. We had multiple sites that are currently looking at installing the V2G chargers. We'll see how this project goes, but it's, this project is quite exciting right now. Clear guidance. So here there are two main pillars, uh, skills training versus what the pro what, what's the energy manager job is looking like day to day. So skills training really like 
when you meet an energy manager, they could be CEM, CMVP, CET, PNG, and some could also be experienced project managers and experienced energy analysts. You know, energy, manage uh, energy management is really a concept that started in the 2010, you know, maybe a few years before 2010s, but it's not like a professional engineer or like specific engineering disciplines, you know. If you have the technical background and you have the interest, you can definitely become an energy manager. And when I was at Clear Result, the office accept and recruit, actually the office recruit a lot of the interns from different universities, from uh, colleges to be the energy analyst. You know, I think those are the great opportunities where you get a couple months, you know, doing a lot of energy data management. It's a great way to see if this is something that you're interested to invest years into it. And then the postage from the right side is saying like, what's the job like day to day? I'm going to be honest with you. The, the comments that I have here is highly technical focused with a little bit of a, why well, maybe I shouldn't say that like utility bill, this is really general customer service. And then technical part is on energy usage, benchmarking, monitoring. Incentive management, you definitely need your understanding of the technique from the technical perspective. Regular tools, some of them. Excel, you know, energy stock portfolio, red screen, those all require technical knowledge and practice. The rest is basically people oriented. I think anyone can do the rest as long as you like people and you are, you are good with conversations, you know, and one of the key roles of energy manager is you have to be able to understand the technical perspective, the utility bills, you know, how the data gets transferred and calculated into energy unit. And what does that mean? You know, and. But then the other perspective is really to be able to convert your technical skills or technical knowledge and being able to communicate with less technical staffs. I don't know if I can put it this way, but majority of the management, you know, a lot of them, they are coming from a business background, from people management background. It is up to the energy managers to be able to convert numbers into graphs, into bar chart, and then into dollars and then put that into criteria to be able to be used by the management to do their capital planning and to go and apply for energy funding within a corporate or an office. So lastly, some energy fund. <laughs> so as I mentioned before, I, I was a co-funding, I was a funding board member for Step Up, and this is really, you know, we started this back in 2019 to help advance meet career female or woman woman to go upper upper positions or you know re get retained or stay longer with the office you know or a woman that come from maternity leave and needs some help to figure out the next step but you know the door is wide open if there's juniors or freshmen who's looking for advice we welcome you to, you know, follow us and interact with us. There's tons of stuff coming up. So just to share with you guys, March 24th, we're having an EDI baseline study. We're going to do a webinar on that. Huge study funded by uh, Natural Resource Canada, ISO, Electra, Hydro One. And then we're also going to host a second session with Efficiency Canada, the Discovering E series on Friday, um, April 29th as well. So that's basically what I want to share with you guys. I don't know if there's any questions. We can have a conversation here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for all that information. I know it's a field that so, so many people are interested in. And uh, 
For all of our participants on the call right now, now is your chance to get any specific questions that you have answered. So our Q&A tool is the best place to do that, which is at the bottom of your screen. If you put them in the chat, I will try to catch them. And you can also raise your hand if you want to have a little bit of a conversation or if you have a question that you feel comfortable to ask out loud. But there were some questions that were submitted ahead of time, which I want to start with. So I get this one quite a bit. There's some confusion about what the difference is between the different, you know, energy analyst versus an energy manager versus an energy auditor. Can you explain a little bit about the difference in those positions? Yeah. Energy analyst um, have a bigger component dealing with the data, you know, analyzing what the, what the data is about, uh, telling uh, what kind of story the data is telling. Energy manager, other than the data analysis, you need to be able to communicate with the management, helping the management, management in terms of reporting maybe even capital planning. Uh, the third one is, uh, sorry, what's the third one? Energy auditor. Energy auditor is really visiting facilities. You know, what the energy auditor means is basically you're, you're walking into a facility, you need to look at the different equipment and the system set up on the facility floors. And then you're gonna come up with a detailed audit of the different types of equipment, you know, the size, record the nameplate informations and the operational schedules. All of that, it's more like energy audit, providing a detailed list of the equipment on the facility floor. And then energy analyst is focused on an analyzing the data and put them into a reporting format, but focus on the technical aspect. Energy manager needs to be able to work with both, you know, on top of that, interacting with the management side. That's kind of like my understanding of what I've done so far. Yeah, that's super helpful. It definitely, I think hearing firsthand kind of that difference of the auditor is there, they're, taking an audit of the energy use and the manager is managing the use of the energy. So it's kind of in the name, but it's helpful to hear it explained that way. Yeah. Energy. Also the, the, the other comment from me is energy managers needs to know, you know, uh, the energy and the works of energy analysts and as well as energy auditors, some of the energy managers does all three of them combine into one, one service. Awesome. We got a ton of questions here. So they all came in really quickly. So if anybody, you know, if there's a question that you really want to see answered, you can go into the Q&A tool and give it a thumbs up and that'll help move it upwards in the list of questions here. But some that are jumping out to me, is an energy manager also expected to deal with retrofit projects? Oh, yes. <laughs> Let me clarify first. Retrofit, the word retrofit comes from the retrofit program which is part of the incentives that ISO created from the province of Ontario. So what retrofit means is basically looking at equipment upgrade. For example, you're retrofitting the lighting from conventional lights to LED light. You're retrofitting a compressor from conventional compressor to digital discus compressor, for example. And then you're retrofitting, you know, let's say an exhaust fan by replacing it with, with another motor that is on VFD. So retrofit really, retrofit project focuses on individual equipment. Absolutely, energy managers are expected to work with them because there's retrofit incentives available and offered by ISO. So any retrofit project that you're working on, you know, 10 out of 10 times, you got to uh, keep an eye on the retrofit incentives or update coming from the ISO program. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I know the incentives are what drives a lot of the upgrades <laughs> lately. Yeah, yeah. They, are the main, they are the main motor behind uh, a lot of the retrofit cases. Retrofit it ties closely back to maintenance project, you know, regular facility maintenance when you need to swap out batch of lights or swap out like a, 
you know what, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't say that because one of the key role regarding retrofit funding is you cannot wait until, you know, it's end of the life for individual equipment. You have to plan ahead of time. If the equipment died or is, is at the end of the life, you really, it's against the program rules to get retrofit incentives, but still it's, it's part of the retrofit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how the, you know, building maintenance and retrofits and energy management, they're, it's, it's fuzzy. I feel like the lines. Yeah. Yeah. All them. yeah. Uh, so we have a question here from Daniela. So first she says, thank you for the presentation. And then she's wondering if you can speak about how an engineer without experience in the energy efficiency sector can transition into that sector. So would you recommend getting any additional certifications on top of the degree or are there, you know, entry level jobs that are easier to get into when you're starting to move into this field? Yeah. The quickest way, like if you have an uh, interest in the energy management field is considered the top two skill training bullets, certified energy manager, as well as CMVP. The most popular one is CEM. It's a five-day concentrated training course offered by, you know, CIET, CIET. You can sign up, but there is, after five days training, there is an exam. You got to pass that. And then every three years, you have to continue signing up for additional training program to get your training credit. Every three years, you have to renew your CEM license. So become a CEM is probably the quickest way to get the uh, eligibility to be uh, doing energy management because, you know, although it's all technical skills, but you got to understand the difference is the approach. You know, instead of just calling a project, let's say construction project, it's an energy project because the importance is how is that project going to save energy versus save power. And so a question that's tied to that, that I've actually also been curious about myself is the CEM profession regulated by Enercan or is it regulated by CIET or who is it that, you know, verifies that, that you, you know, you are a certified energy manager. It's, it's, I think it's regulated by AE, if I remember the names correctly. It's, it's, it's a North America. It started in the States. And uh, CIET is offering the training program. They had the license with AE to offer that training and then provide certification. Okay. That makes sense. Awesome. And then, so... Some questions here that are getting into a bit more specific situations. So someone's asking if they're a mechanical engineer studying a master of engineering in sustainable energy, they're studying deep energy retrofits in the residential sector. And, you know, similar to Danielle's question, they want to know what are the ways to get a career in the same field? So, you know, knowing they have the mechanical engineering background, does that change your answer? Or would you still recommend the CEM and uh, the, sorry, the second certification there on the list? I would recommend CEM. In fact, it will be easier for, for that person to become certified as CEM because, you know, the training is quite focused. It focuses a lot on the technical training side. Like as a mechanical engineer, you are already familiar with HVAC systems. You know, you know inside out how the, how the principles of what that system is and the design engineering design of that system. And especially when you are involved of in deep retrofit, deep retrofit means you're replacing, swap out the key HVAC unit, you know, and then replace it with a better performance, you know, a more energy efficient unit. It's really, I think I mentioned before, it, the key is the energy approach. You know, that system, for example, if you're doing deep retrofit, that system is a mechanical system upgrade. But when you call that an energy project, that means you're just shifting your focus a little bit. You know, instead of doing the mechanical component upgrade, the engineering design, the drawings, do all of that as a regular engineering practice, but you have to add in an additional step. Basically, how is that HVAC upgrade project going to 
reduce your electricity bills. You know, instead of consuming this amount of electrical bills before, HVAC system has two parts. One is the electrical usage. The other one is gas through the boilers. You know, it's two components. You got to take it a step further, looking at the performance and then calculating the energy data in terms of kilowatt hour reduction, in terms of the BTU reduction. That is the only add-on. It's a, it's a perspective and mindset understanding from energy perspective. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. For this next question here, I do have to ask first if you are familiar with a standard that was mentioned, because I'm not familiar with it myself. Do you know what the green button standard is? have not heard of it. <laughs> okay. I haven't heard of it either. So Jonathan, I think that's a great question to maybe follow up with Kathy via LinkedIn, or if you want to share some more detail in the chat or unmute yourself to add some detail to that question. Just so you know, the, they're wondering, how does the green button standard, how will that impact small startups in the energy sector using AI and machine learning? But difficult to answer without knowing what the green button standard is. So <laughs> just yeah. encourage you to follow up on that one, Jonathan. And then uh, another question here, would you still need to get certified as an Enercan Energy Advisor after getting the CEM designation? If you have the CEM, that means you qualify. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I like the easy answers that one. <laughs> You're good to go. You get the CEM. Does it, does it vary the kind of work that you can do or they're both equally valid for performing energy management work? It's very similar, you know, Enercan, energy advisor means you got to know energy project and the energy perspective and being able to know the energy data and then being able to pinpoint the energy opportunities. It's like you, you need to be able to, you know, get trained and be able to understand the energy perspective. It's energy advisory work, you know, without knowing those, like your your advice is going to be off a little bit. <laughs> awesome. And so Jonathan here, I'm going to allow you to talk. So you should be able to unmute yourself now and just to explain your question a little bit further. Yeah. So let me see. I'm just entering the Green Button Coalition in the chat. So this was introduced in the States three years ago. Mm -hmm. And Ontario has mandated utilities to provide access to customers residential and uh, commercial customers access to their utility bill data time of use with the customer's permission. And the idea behind this is that third parties would then be able to join that ecosystem to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by linking up that data, doing analysis and adding services for the clients using things like uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources Canada's uh, portfolio manager or RET screen for new buildings. So we've had students working on projects. They use the project or the pro, yeah, pro, what is it? Portfolio manager. You know that one, right? And, and then, portfolio manager, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did a, an energy audit on, on one of the town of Coburg's buildings where we have a, it's called Venture 13. And so it's got a data center upstairs and then it's got uh, office space and downstairs and a maker space. And they were able to take the energy data for a month, the bill for a year, I should say, 12 months. And then it adds in the, the weather conditions and the usage, type of usage. And then it uses the smart meter for measuring the offset. They have a solar panel on the roof. So offsetting peak hour usage with the solar panel. And then they're using AI to, from utility API and utility smart out of London, Ontario to create a sandbox for a hackathon we're gonna do for go open data on April the 24th. First is the workshop and April the 23rd is the hackathon for students. It's, I, I, yeah, the concept is familiar. Uh, 
I just don't know that uh, they were using the green button as a sort of like a specified term for this. So what you are referring to is really GHG emission control and it's a sort of like energy portfolio management. So out of that, it's really like you're combining all kinds of things, you know, the energy conservation efficiency and then the renewable energy and then the AI technology, you know, combining that with small medium monitoring. It's, it's, it's really like, it, this is already like, a, you're, you're already doing more compared to what energy managers need to do. But this is also where I'm trying to get down to, you know, when you were trained as a CEM, as a certified energy manager, like you were required to understanding the bills, understanding the MNV data, being able to do the calculation and reporting and identify the energy savings opportunities. But the one that you mentioned green button is other than that, you're going to factor in the uh, rooftop solars, the renewable energy, energy generation, and then you have to factor in, you know, how is that going to reduce your, like, where is your baseline of the greenhouse gas emission? And then how is the renewable energy comes in and then in combination with energy conservation, energy efficiency to reduce the emission levels. And then on top of that, you know, utilizing the uh, monitoring skills. So you are ahead. <laughs> well, we're not ahead. We're ahead on paper. <laughs> so like the town of Coburg has to also enter, well, all the municipalities have to implement an asset management system for the green and the gray infrastructure. So it's really focused on the engineering gray infrastructure side, which is where you are with the energy, but they need to be thinking about carbon offsets from tree planting and riparian zone planting to protect source water. And so it's not just energy, it's also water from your energy bill. Yeah, I, 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 knows, I knows what it's like. Blackstone, like one of the uh, companies that I'm working closely with right now, Blackstone Energy Service, they are actually uh, doing, they do renewable energy construction installation, and then they also have, you know, conventional energy system upgrades, such, such as chill upgrade, lighting switch out, you know. But then they are also currently working on an R and actually that's not R and D. It's already beyond that level. They have the black pack. Basically, it's a system that collects the utility bills or the utility data and then create an energy dashboard. And they've been using that black pad for a solar, a solar project. And they are also going to, there's plans to add in the data from the EV chargers. And they're also using that to monitor the regular, um, like extract these regular utility bills from the online uh, account whatsoever and then trying to combine all of that into one so the energy uh, so the energy dashboard is going to be able to give you a snapshot of all kinds of energy like uh, consumptions on site for that facility i think it's a similar idea on top of that they are they started a couple years back in terms of the carbon roadmap so that currently is a study. So, you know, a look, benchmarking the current carbon usage of the facility and then a look into like a projection in terms of carbon usage, you know, reduction via different options of system upgrade or retrofit or renewable energy project three years down the road, five years down the road, and then, uh, you know, 10 years down the road. So that right now it gets tied back into our carbon neutral uh, overall objective by 2023, by 20, like, uh, 30, by 2050. If you want to achieve that kind of GHG uh, emission reduction target, what kind of project that you should be considering, planning, what kind of capital budget that you should be penciling out in order to get you there. So that, that's a fourth component in terms of the, you know, GHG, the map. 
So just to jump in here, we are past 5.45 and I feel bad to cut off what is, you know, a really interesting conversation and there are some more questions in the Q&A, another hand raised. So I would encourage everybody who still has further questions to reach out to Kathy on LinkedIn or to reach out to Step Up if you want to continue any of those conversations. I'm also going to plug just really quickly our Discovery Hub, which is a great place to connect with other energy managers. Sorry, just, yeah. just one, one thing here. I've got my email address here. If you have more questions, I guess you can send me emails. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, and I think with the warning that Kathy's inbox can sometimes be a little crazy. So if you don't hear from her, maybe just send another, another nudge and you'll get a response there. So lots of interest in this career field. So thank you so much, Kathy, for taking the time to share your story, to answer some of these questions. I do apologize to anyone whose question we didn't get to. Really, the channels are open, so keep reaching out. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, for everyone who joined us today, thank you for your time, for your attention. It is greatly appreciated. And if you have any questions, like I said, follow up with either of us after the call. And one final thank you to our sponsors, Natural Resources Canada and Electricity Human Resources Canada. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kathy, and have a great night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.